So the speakers I have in front of me right here are from Alexandria Audio. They are their reference monitor speakers. They're called the Monitor. Now Alexandria Audio is based in Indonesia. I've been listening to these speakers for the past four to five weeks and I'm ready to share my experience to you uh, with them. So let's talk about the Alexandria Audio monitors. So a couple of months ago, I received an email from Alexandria Audio, and I'll be honest, I never heard of them. I think they're, they may be relatively new or maybe relatively new to the United States. I've not seen any dealers uh, in my lifetime for Alexandria Audio, but I was contacted by them and asked if I wanted to review their reference monitor speaker, which is called the monitor. And they sent me pictures of it sent me information and details about their philosophy and their goal with these and basically their goal was to create a uh, monitor size it's not really a bookshelf size these are a little bit larger than something like a dyne audio special 40 or heritage special they're a little bit maybe taller than even my focal diablos these are a nice size speaker but they're not too large as to where they're going to dominate a room. So if you have a smaller room or you don't want some monstrosity, but you still want every bit of that musical performance from the top end all the way to the low end, these are speakers you might want to take a look at. Now, a lot of bookshelf speakers need to be supplemented with subwoofers because physics is a real thing. The smaller the box, the smaller the enclosure, the tougher it is for those small boxes to bring the bass out. And the bass is really the foundation of the music. Um, I've talked about this in the past. When I've put in a pair of REL S510 subs, it took my system to another level because it was filling out and fleshing out all of those sounds that the speaker cannot reproduce on their own. The lower bottom range, the bass, right? Which is so important in music. And when we buy a bookshelf speaker, a lot of them wow us with bass. And a lot of reviewers always say, wow, they put out great bass for their size, right? That's the key word. What Alexandria Audio wanted to do with the monitor was create a balanced bookshelf slash monitor speaker that doesn't really skimp out on the bass. Instead of saying, wow, these put out great bass for their size, I'm saying, wow, these put out great bass. They sound like a small floor stander. Um, in fact, when I was listening to these, I spent a week listening with my subs on, and then I spent the remaining, remaining month with the subs turned off because these did not need the subwoofers. Now, before I get to the sound of the monitors and what I thought about them, I will say that these come in at $6,500 US. These are $6,500 a pair, which puts them in the range of, say, the Dyne Audio Heritage Special, which I loved. If you saw that review from a couple of years ago, I was saying this might be the last speaker that I ever buy, which didn't happen, but I love the Dyne Audio Heritage Specials. I was so impressed with them out of the gate. They had a wow factor for me, and again, it was for their size. I was like, for their size, they are dynamos. They pack a punch. Well, these in the same price range are just as beautiful, if not more beautiful. You can see the design um, of these. They kind of have a gloss over them, kind of like the Dyne Audio Special 40s. So it's not really a natural finish. There is a gloss coating, but these speakers are 90 decibel efficient. Alexandria Audio believes in easy to drive speakers, uh, se highly sensitive speakers, so you don't have to have that 800 watts per channel to really juice them up. So at 90 decibels, right, these are, I believe, eight ohms as well, and they can handle 150 watts. That's what they're rated to. I'm looking at the label on the back of the speaker. And I put them in my system and I've used these with a range of integrated amps and even some separates. Um, I really, really like the sound with the Gato 400, which is an integrated amp I reviewed recently. 
The sound with the AVIC U150 is phenomenal, and that's how I heard these at their best. The uh, Pass Labs XP22 and X250.8 juice them up a little more in the treble and energy. They sounded beautiful. Um, I even tested these with a $180 Class A tube integrated amp from Amazon. I received this amp last week to review and I was thinking it was just going to get sent right back. But this little amp surprised me and it sounded pretty darn good with these as well. But if I were to say um, reference sound for me, it was with the Avic U150 with these speakers. Now what do these speakers sound like? Uh, first of all, they ship in these beautiful wood boxes and they have the Alexandria audio monitor burned into it. These are wooden boxes that they ship in. So when they arrived, they shipped via DHL. They arrived in about a week's time and I was blown away by the packaging and they arrived safe and sound without a scratch on them. So plus one for the packaging, thumbs up all the way. Uh, speed of shipping, thumbs up, took about a week, um, and quality when I opened the box, I was blown away by the looks, the finish, and just the overall vibe. I like these kind of speakers with the dark wood and the stripes and the designs. I really have something in my heart for those speakers, which is why I loved the um, uh, Bucard Audio S400 Mark II in the Fauna finish. Beautiful, beautiful. So I love the looks. I love the size because they're a little bit bigger than most bookshelves, which I knew right off the bat is going to bring more bass. Now this is a two-way design. You have an eight inch woofer, right? And you have a tweeter. I could actually read you some of the um, details of this. So Alexandria Audio says about the engineering of these speakers, we believe that every high performance speaker needs a solid foundation of engineering. The foundation is the woofer, a proprietary high sensitivity 8 inch paper cone with extended bandwidth tuned to give natural and excellent bass transient response. Um, and then it goes on to talk about the sound. We believe the monitor can convey closer to true musical fundamentals, and we hope that music lovers can have an enhanced listening experience through the monitor that is soulful, musical, and extraordinary. Uh, these are rated uh, 35 hertz to 20 kilohertz. There is a 28 millimeter dome tweeter. And if you go to the Alexandria Audio website, which is alexandriaaudio.com, they go over extreme detail about the parts inside of the speaker. Everything seems to be really high quality here. And when I plugged them in and started listening to them, I was listening to my Focal Diablo Utopias, which come in these days at $24,000 retail, which is insane for the set with the stands. Um, when I put these up next to those first, I was like, whoa, these sound really really good almost like a little bit more of a muted Diablo but with bigger bass so I took the Diablos out and I took the time to set these up uh, and it took me about two hours to get them dialed in perfectly and when I did I was hearing that soulful presentation and that's how I would describe it a soulful presentation they're pretty neutral nothing is exaggerated you're not going to get the warm and fuzzies from a bloated forward mid-range, you're not going to get ear fatigue from a sizzling treble, and you're not going to get that thinness or leanness that we can associate with smaller speakers. These are really balanced from top to bottom, and they have a sweet soul about them. Uh, if speakers had a soul, I would say the soul in the monitors is very sweet, pure. Um, the sound is just beautiful vocals are pure and detailed the treble is very detailed but it never crosses that line of being harsh or fatiguing the bass is full in the lower registers and even in the mid bass you get some nice punch but these are not crazy punchy uh, speakers that are gonna scream at you these are really soulful speakers as Alexandria audio states so I have them on some Dyne Audio Stand 6s. I have the plates for the Heritage Special on here. 
uh, because these are kind of large bookshelf speakers. As I talk, I'll show you them on the stands out here. So as I listen more to the monitor speakers, I remember bringing uh, my wife Debbie in and I said, what do you think of these speakers? And I let her listen to them. And then I hooked back in the Diablos and she said the Diablos to her were a little more, um, she said, uh, hurt her ears, which they don't hurt my ears, but some people are more sensitive to that treble. And with these, she said they sounded a little more muted in comparison, which was my exact uh, thought when I first heard them. The treble is very extended in these, but it doesn't cross into that too much area, right? I don't feel the focals do. I, I, I like the airy presentation of the focals. These are not so much airy, but they do image like a champion. Now, monitor speakers, bookshelf speakers are known, one of their biggest strengths is disappearing in your room. Uh, how many of you here have had a set of speakers where you place them in and they just disappear? You hear the music, but you can't really pinpoint it as coming from the boxes. Uh, then there's other speakers you could set up and you know the sounds coming from the boxes. Both ways is just fine, but if you want that uh, holographic three-dimensional imaging, not all speakers can do it, but these do it very, very nicely. Again, it's not exaggerated or overdone, but there are time, there were times when I was listening to these where I would have to look over my left shoulder because I heard a sound coming from directly, uh, like completely on my side and the speakers in front of me. And I remember opening my eyes and looking and I was like, I cannot tell that the sound is coming from the boxes. And that's one thing I love about bookshelf speakers and, and why I tend to prefer a two-way uh, type of speaker. I've had larger speakers, but I tend to also have smaller rooms. So for smaller rooms, these are the kind of speakers that really excel. Um, and these have plenty of bass, plenty of power, plenty of volume. They can go louder than my ears can stand and they remain clean and they don't get distorted. Um, they are actually really, really high-end speakers. Um, some may want me to compare them, like comparing them to the Focal Diablo is not fair because the Diablo is a $24,000 speaker. But I was listening and I said, if I sold the Diablos to put some cash back in my pocket, I could buy these for much less and still be 100% happy with the sound. Um, I'm picky with my system, but I'm not that picky, right? I can listen to things that cost less and be just as happy because as I've said again and again and again, it's not what you pay for a hi-fi product, it's what your ears enjoy. If you like a piece that's $500 better than a $10,000 piece, that's awesome. And I've come across pieces just recently, the WiseDAC 204, which is $2,800, but I like it better than some $10,000 DACs. Crazy, right? Not really, because price is not really a gauge of quality in hi-fi. It can be, it can be not, you know, there are some pieces that are in that exotic range that are just magical. But there's some in that five-figure range that that are just overpriced. Uh, these are not overpriced in my opinion. They sound to me like a good $8,000 speaker, yet they come in at $6,500. They have a beautiful, soulful sound, at least in my room with my system. Um, I use the Lumen U2 streamer, which is my go-to streamer these days and will be for a long time to come. Uh, and the WiseDAC 204 which I just adore. It's To me, that's that little magic box I talked about in that video. I use Mad Scientist speaker cables, and I believe I'm using Nordist Red Dawn uh, interconnects uh, for the DAC. And I have my Puritan Audio PSM 156 purifier, which is just astonishing in my system. I, that's one thing I will not get rid of as long as I have a reference system. So these in that system, compared to other speakers I've heard, uh, you know, these are really, really good. They sit up there with some of the better speakers I've heard, the better bookshelf speakers I've heard, but they're different compared to, um, say, the um, Fleetwood DeVille's. Those are really a horn, they have a horn tweeter, so they have that specific kind of sound. 
a more forward sound, a bigger sound, right? These don't sound like horn speakers compared to the Bucard S400s. These have, uh, they're more holographic, uh, they're richer, they have more depth, uh, they sound more high end, um, but you're paying the extra money. You're paying $4,000 more, so you should get that. Um, these sit up there again with some speakers that I've heard in the $8,000 range. So can I recommend them? Heck yeah. I would own these if I didn't already own my Diablos. Um, these are beautiful speakers and looks. They're beautiful speakers and sound. They're not going to kick you in the chest as you listen. They're not going to assault your ears and they're not going to sound dull or bloated. These have zero bloat. They are balanced top to bottom. If you're looking for neutral with a little bit of soul, take a look at the Alexandria Audio monitors. Now, I'll admit, I don't know much about the company. They sent me these. They wanted my honest opinion. And that is what I'm giving here. Beautiful shipping or packaging, quick shipping, beautiful product, high end product with high end sound. And uh, these are worthy of any high-end system. Uh, these are not a cheap uh, speaker, so in looks or sound. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the monitors. I love these things, but I'm gonna have to package them back up and send them back. I can't afford to buy everything, but there were days where I'm like, ah, oh, if I could sell this, I could buy these, but I, I gotta stop that stuff. So. These are speakers I would own in my reference system. That's about the highest praise I can give them at this point because there's a lot of speakers that I listen to that I just pass on and say, nah, I'm not a fan of these. So these are killer. So I hope to see more people review these. I hope the word gets out about Alexandria. And if you want more information, including all of the details, I'll put a link in the description below to Alexandria Audio's page for these speakers. No affiliation, no kickbacks as always. I don't make any money on this channel, which um, kind of stinks for me. So check them out and thank you. I will see you very soon. I have a slew of reviews coming, including some photo reviews, cameras and lenses. I have three amps coming Monday. I have a set of speakers coming the end of next week. I have another amp to review inside the house. I'm starting to get backed up. So there's gonna be a lot coming on this channel. Subscribe, hit notifications, and I'll see you in the next one, bye.